and welcome to the Doodle and Flea Knits podcast. My name is Erin and I am going to be taking you through my um, knitting projects and what I've been up to for the last month. If you're curious about anything else that I have done or seeing some of these uh, finished objects in progress, you could check out some of my other videos on my channel. Um, yeah, so today is October 2nd, 2021. It is October Happy fall, happy sweater weather, and um, at least where I am here in Ohio, I um, it's definitely sweater weather in the mornings. In the afternoon, it's a little iffy, and then it, it drops down. So hopefully it is sweater weather wherever you are, and if not, wear your hand knits anyway. Wool is thermoregulating, so wear those knits for the pride. Um, let's see, you can find me on Instagram as doodle and flea knits with a period in between each word. And then you can also find me on Ravelry, which I try to keep my project pages pretty up to date. Um, so if I forget to say something, um, like needle size or anything like that, that should be in my project pages. My Ravelry is the Threddy Bear. Both of those will be linked down below. Um... So check them out, follow me, friend me, and let's get all into the nitty stuff. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Ah, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> okay, so finished objects. I have a couple, a couple that I'm really excited um, to talk about. So the first one, and because I don't, I don't block my knits, y'all know that, is a test knit from. Sarah Opie, and this is the cinch sock, and that is the little star of the show right there. So I did this test nest at the end of last month. You might have seen, um, yeah, this was a work in progress last episode. So I I do have two finished socks. And I have to say, these fit really, really well. Um, for the most part, it can be a vanilla knit. I would say it's pretty beginner-friendly, maybe an adventurous beginner. Um, yeah, so I knit up the size 4. It has a German short row heel, which I've, I think I've only done once and I ripped it out. Because I couldn't... I stopped in the middle of the project and couldn't remember what I was doing. So German short row heel. And I think this is why I really like the fit. So I am tempted to kind of make that my go-to heel. But with after that heels, I don't have to pearl. So I don't know. I'm still up in the air on that. But yeah. So I knit a size four on a U.S. size zero nine-inch circular needle, and um, I actually finished these at the end of August. So these are all my August September, yeah. Um, these are all my September knits, um, and I finished these at the very end of August, like August thirty-first, like. 10 o'clock at night because I wanted to get them in for the end of summer sock camp. So my second sock was actually the fastest sock that I've ever knit. And um, I want to say I did, it was in two days. I know that. And it was, the majority of it was during a, a weekday while I was at work, which I don't usually knit during work because I don't sit like through that many meetings and stuff like that. It's more hands-on stuff. But yeah, so whatever is number two, whichever one is number two, um, is currently the reigning champion of Aaron's fastest knits. But yeah, so let's chit chat about this yarn a little bit. This is a sock set from Sorella Yarn. And it is a collaboration with TL Yarn Crafts, um, but yeah, it is, the speckle is surfboard. Is there surfboard so sock set? Because I don't think the, 
this light purple has um an actual name but like i love this speckles like there's just every color you would want i would never think of pairing like as a dark teal and a dark blue like uh i i'm really regretting not buying enough i think i still have like half a skein of like the the main color but it's not enough it's never enough what's that song <laughs> it'll never be enough but yeah so i really like these socks and like i said they fit really well honestly i don't even know if i've weaved in the ends yet no i wear them with no ends sticking out oh well we do what we can okay so the other really exciting I am so happy to announce that it is finally done is the Wrap Me Up sweater scarf. So I cast this on February 14th. It has been a long time whip and I really don't like having languishing whips because um, my gauge tends to change quite a bit. So here we go. And the ends aren't woven in on this yet either, but I did wash it. So this massive pile of ribbing and flat stockinette did some damage to my knitting mojo multiple times um but it's done so the wrap me up sweater scarf is a scarf slash sweat that you could wear so okay so it starts with a long tube of ribbing whole bunch of stock in it so yeah you're recognizing like where it's a scarf but um you can put it on I'm not gonna do that um but so you can put it on in the uh two ribbed ends will act as sleeves and then you kind of wrap it and crisscross it so this is for my sister for her wedding which is coming up in January so I still have plenty of time but oh my gosh I'm just so happy it's done it's so the wrap me up sweater scarf has done a good number on my knitting mojo because it it is a slog to get through because you have so much of just straight stockinette knit flat so that means a lot of purling and it it just gets really boring you want something to do you at least want decreases I don't think there's a single decrease so it is very beginner friendly I would not recommend it for any beginning knitters and the same reason I would not recommend ever knitting a scarf as your beginning knit they take forever and they are boring they're easy, but they're boring. So I would definitely suggest if I was a new knitter, re-knitting for the first time. I did a, a scarf that was like this long, so scarf. Um, but I would do like a hat. They're pretty quick. They're easy. They're at least, well, then that's in the round, but you could seam it. I don't know. I think it depends on how confident you are as a, as a crafter uh, as to what I would recommend. Anyway. But yeah, so this is definitely beginner friendly, but just know it will take a long time. But yeah, anyway, so this was knit up in Lion Brand Touch of Merino. So it is a Merino acrylic blend and it is in the colorway Beet Red. And I think this will just go so well with my sister's wedding colors. So I can't wait for her to see the whole thing because um, she will just be seeing it in this a scarfy form and hopefully it fits. It is a one size pattern, um, but I think it, I'm not sure how it would fit if you were more busty, which I think she's a little bit bustier than I am. Dog hair all over my knits. <laughs> um, so, but I, I think it would, I think it should fit because this is over 
over five feet because it of just the straight stockinette um because it is significantly longer than my arm span so and i'm five two so this is at least five two so i am pretty confident in saying that it's a six feet it's at least six feet of knitting but yeah, I think where I left off last time was around here. Um, so I did do quite a bit of knitting in the last month. And I am just so glad that it's, it's over. Um, but I, I really can't wait to see it in the wedding. So but yeah. All right. I love you, sister. This was a definite labor of love. So those are my only two finished objects. I really felt like um, October was, September was a lot more productive. And I think that's because I was working, I don't know, maybe like languishing whips are a little bit more satisfying to finish. I don't know. But it felt a lot more productive. Because when I gathered everything up for the month, it's like, ooh, little more. I thought I did more, but oh well. Um, okay, so let's talk about whips. But first, let's talk about a little bit of frogs. Um, so this is the Little Tree Farm Sock um, by Valerie Wibbins and knitting it up in teeny button studios and the red stripe is candy cane forest and the green is fiddle leaf and i was knitting a size medium on a us size zero and this is my first time color doing color work in quite a while and my first time doing color work turned out way too big well this is pretty darn small so I'm going to frog it. I just haven't gotten the energy because with the two colors are going to twist and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's, it'll get frogged. I'm kind of mad at myself because I, I tried it on. It, it didn't even get really past my toes. Um, like I was way off with size. And so now I'm trying to figure out if I want to go up a needle size or up a size or both. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I think I started to say I'm sad. I'm mad at myself because I didn't try it on until I got past the heel. Like I marked for the heel and everything. Um, like I was one, two, three, four. I had about 30 more rounds before the toe. So try on your color works. Learn from me. Try on your color works stuff before you are almost done. <laughs> ah! Um, so I'll probably, I really do like the pattern. I like the yarn. So I'm probably going to cast this on a little bit closer to um, Christmas because we got some time now. So yeah, that will get frogged eventually and is currently in timeout. Okay, so that was my first work in progress. Sit, well, first slash no longer, question mark. My next work in progress is um, the Manderly Socks by Kim Jackson. I am part of the... Knit and Read Circle, I think they're calling it. And so we get to read a book and then we get a pattern um, that is inspired by that book. So this is Manderly. And if you are a literary nerd or have at least seen the movie, you will not recognize that Manderly is from Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which is probably one of my favorite books. Um, I read it in high school. I reread it in January after watching the movie that came out on Netflix with Lily James and Army Hammer. And I was like, wow, this like this movie seems really familiar, this storyline. 
and it was I did read it in high school um I just didn't remember I don't usually commit that kind of stuff to memory books at least but yeah so it is a nice um I think it's like a C inspired pattern which I honestly had no idea how it was going to work out but yeah so I have one done uh minus the heel I didn't that is not where the heel is going I did I think this much in one day while I was knitting at a um, baseball game but yeah so this just needs a heel and I did start um, and really haven't gotten too much done on the sock number two because it's a twisted rib and that's a pain to get through <laughs> so um, I'm working on that but yeah so I'm knitting these up on a US size one a little concerned that it's not going to fit but the when I try on the sock tube the fit is not accurate because I mean I'm gonna get another two inches after adding the heel so maybe I should like add the heel I can make sure these fit and I knowing that I don't need to go up a needle size so I usually use a US size 0 because um, when I use a size 1 it the my tension is just too big and I end up with too big of a sock and now I've been doing like all these like pattern and color work socks and now I'm questioning myself I don't know but then I also like wool stretches and I want to, like, I don't wash my hand knits every time I wear them. So I don't know if, so like when you wear them, they stretch a little bit. I don't want them to stretch. So I'm okay wearing them like a little tight for the first time. I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, this beautiful speckle is from the Red Pansy. It is um, part of the Monet Impressionism Club and this is their July colorway inspired by water lilies, I believe. So I did get the other couple months too and they are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous speckles. Um, but I really like how it's knitting up um with this pattern it's bright and fun and totally not folly just fine by me so yes that is my other work in progress my other other work in progress is the honey buff cardigan which has been hanging around for quite a while now um, I don't remember when I cast this on, but we are getting sleeves. Very excited. So I did have a afternoon, an afternoon uh, that the girls were not home yet. And so I sat down and picked up the shoulder stitches for both sleeves. Sleeve stitches, shoulder stitches? I think they're sleeve stitches. Um, so I picked them up while they weren't able to bother me. And I wanted to do them both at the same time because they require a distribution uneven. So like there's more at the top because it has a puff shoulder. And I wanted to make sure that they kind of mirrored each other. Um, and I knew I would forget by the time I got to the other one. So yeah, so this stitch is, or this sleeve is just on hold. And I am working on this sleeve, which I'm probably about ready to fade in the next color. But yeah, so there's a lot of short row shaping. Um, just a little bit of a puff sleeve, but I think it will turn out really cute. Um... But yeah, so what size are 
I'm thinking I was supposed to switch needle sizes. Um, well, anyway, currently these are being knit on a U.S. size 3, 3.25 millimeter Chai Goo interchangeable set. Maybe I did change them. I don't remember. This is why I never change my needle sizes because I always forget. I just keep on, keep on trucking, right? But yeah, so I finally got past all the short row shaping and I'm ready to knit in the round and um, do some decreasing. So yay. Um, yeah, so this is the Honey Bob Cardigan by Poison Girls. They have a bunch of cute like vintage inspired designs. And then um, the yarn that I'm using, all of them, is a Sorella Oopsie Bundle. So I don't have any colorways or anything. But yeah, aren't they lovely? Lovely, lovely. But yeah, so um, actually as a note, I'm knitting size three in the sleeves based on the uh, sweater schematic and my measurements. And then for the body, I knit a mixture of size two and size four. So right now I'm just covering like all the sizes. <laughs> Um, because my gauge was off. I had a good row gauge, but my stitch gauge was off. So I'm hoping it'll be like the perfect amount. The body fits pretty well as long as I don't button it, which I don't button cardigans too often. Um, and it's looking, the sleeve is fitting well around here at least. So I think I did it. Hopefully. But yeah. So that is that. And then I have one new cast on to share with you. And it is, um, I did this all yesterday. So I'm pretty impressed with this. So um, cast on October 1st for this. For the Spooky Sock Make Along by Moon Glow Yarn Co. Nitty Natty and Crazy Sock Lady. They're all kind of collaborating. And yes, yeah, so... Here is what I have so far. I am really impressed with my one day of knitting on this. Um, it helped that I was able to work from home, so I was able to knit a little bit more. But yeah. So this is the Happy Haunt, again, by Valerie Wibbins, who um, did, uh, she designed the little tree socks that are getting frogged. Um, but it is a free download on Ravelry, and it's more of a recipe than um, an actual pattern. Like, there's no, like, cast on 64 stitches or whatever. Um, so I'm pretty much only using it as a, um, I'm using the chart is pretty much what it comes down to. Um, there's a little chart for these ghosts. I cast on 63 stitches, and I'm doing this on a U.S. size 1, 2.25, um, 9-inch circular. Again, because that's, uh, because of the color work. And I cast, yeah, I'm casting on 63 stitches, which is why this is, like, a seed stitch rib. But I had to make sure that I had a 9, um, 9-stitch nine repeat, which it said... It was having you knit a 72 stitches um, for like the leg and the, the foot, which I typically cast on 64. So that's significantly larger and I knew it wasn't going to fit well. Watch me have to frog this because this doesn't fit. Because <laughs> um, I think I know better. But, um, but yeah, so I cast on 63 stitches. When it comes down to the heel... I'll just pick up my usual 32 stitches for the heel. I don't mind the heel being a little bit bigger. Um, and I, I don't see that as being an issue at all. But yeah, so um, from here, I am just going to knit um, a straight vanilla sock with this uh, brown color. I think it's called like six feet down. And, um, yeah, just the rest of the sock is going to be in this brown. 
and then when I cast on the next sock, it's going to have the same like pinky cast on edge. And then the ghosts are going to be in these two colorways. So the um, yarn that I'm using is from Moon Glow Yarn Company. It is their, let me make sure I get this right, Haunted Rose Garden set. So it was picked out by Natalie of Love and Stitches, Nitty Natty. Um, and it's just so, such good colors. Um, but yeah, so this is just a little make along that's going on throughout October. And if I keep knitting these this fast, I mean, this is gonna hopefully fly off the needles. But yeah, um, I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. I was only doing like the two, um, sets of ghosts because... I thought I was going to run out of minis. There, there were 10 grams, which they do not. <laughs> these ghosts don't take nine, 10 grams. Um, so I'm still thinking if maybe I'll add the other ghosts, maybe like around the right before the toe um, or what. I'm not quite sure. Because now I'm like, I don't know. So now I'm questioning myself. Anyway, it'll be okay. I think I'll just stick to the original plan. Because I don't want to spend a ton of time on colorwork socks that I'm pretty much only going to be able to wear in like October. I mean, I still will, but you know what I mean. Anywho... That is all of my works in progress, all of my finished objects. Um, so I guess we can chit chat a little bit about what's been going on around here, which has been a big fat nothing. I did get, uh, or I did participate in the Yarn Discovery Tour 2021. I think it was 17 years that they've been doing this. And which is just a yarn tour of some Northeast Ohio um, local yarn stores, which I had never been to any of them. So that was definitely a treat for me. Um, but I spent pretty much a whole day doing that. I think I drove like 200 miles total. But it was a lot of fun. Um, I spent quite a bit of money. And I got two sweater quantities. So these will be for next year because for the most part, I pretty much have the rest of the fall in my head, like ready to knit because I, I don't like my spontaneous cast ons or anything. But yeah, so I got sweater quantities of these two. So this is Scout. Um... It's Scout, I believe it's like a DK weight, it's three, which I think that's a DK. And um, Scout from Kelborn Woolens in the col colorway Stone Heather. So it is a nice like brownie gray. And I think it'll kind of be one of those that depending on what it is worn with will look like a different color. So like, I think taupe would be a good way color to describe it um and that is going to be a cabled a cabled sweater that i'm so excited for like i really i was really wanted a um 100 wool yarn that wasn't like super itchy and this definitely fits the bill because i know it's going to take me forever so it's kind of going to be like a little heritage knit for me and I'm hopefully going to have it forever but yeah so this will be um a cast on for next year and so will this other one um which this is Hedgehog Fibers Tweety 
And this is also going to be another capely goodness sweater. So yeah, I just have all the cabled sweaters in my future. Uh, so maybe we could do something fun if you want to do some cables with me. But yeah, Hedgehog Fibers Tweedy, which if you're not familiar with Tweedy, the um, flex of all those beautiful colors are um, thread waste. So you, they snip their yarn ties and then that yarn tie gets like ground up but I don't know how they do it like it they make it smaller and then it gets woven into their um merino um, for their tweed sorry I got distracted so yeah the, so this base is 50% Falkland merino 37.5 recycled wool and 12.5 um thread waste so you can actually donate your thread. And um, I believe they give you a discount on it too, or a discount code if you donate. So I do have a little scrap bag of um, ends and ties and, and stuff like that that I'm slowly collecting. And um, I mean, it's gonna take me a while because it's gotta go like overseas, but this is what I've collected so far. I did my tiny but mighty bag, um, which I think is perfect for scraps. But yeah, so that's kind of, so yeah, the, um, I was talking about the Yarn Discovery Tour originally, but yeah, so I got both of those while I was there and I got some single skeins of yarn um, as well. I got a knitting book, um, like a knitting fiction book um but yeah it was it was a lot of fun and I didn't get to go to a couple that were more local to me ironically um because I drove about an hour to get into Cleveland where the bulk of the shops were and so I never really made it to my more local shop so I could do that whenever though right But yeah, um, Hedgehog Fibers I got from Fine Points, and then Scout was from Around the Table Yarns, which I really, really liked Around the Table. So I'm hopefully we'll be uh, back soon. But yeah, other than that, there's, I'm trying to think what's been going on, and I can't really think of anything in couple of colds and because we can't we're in a pandemic we can't talk about sickness we can't talk about our lives without sickness right um but yeah mainly just working and I think that's pretty much it because my life is exciting all right well I guess I will say goodbye then so thank you very very much for um is sitting with me and talking about yarn because my family will not do it with me. But yes, hopefully I will see you again soon.